welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomo's biology and in this video lecture we want to talk about blastulation I have already prepared many videos regarding developmental biology but these are special requests to make separate video on blastulation and gastrulation which are one of the most important stages of development of, a, of an embryo so let's talk about blastulation in this video now first thing that I want to let you know is what is blastulation now to understand blastulation or gastrulation you need to know the scheme and the phases of development and the phases of development suggests us that development always starts with one cell and that cell is known as zygote right after the fertilization which is the combination of the nucleus of sperm and egg we have a big cell that cell contains 2n number of chromosome we call it zygote so what is development in real term the development is nothing but that zygote containing 2n number of chromosomes as a nucleus that zygotic cell start dividing and without division there is no way a new organism can generate right so ultimately it's a growth of a cell growth in terms of size of the cell and growth in terms of number of cells so that cell start dividing and the division is very very rapid and that very rapid division at the very beginning it takes very less time to divide compared to the normal adult cell so sooner what it produces it produces a mass of cells which is known as like a, a, a ball rigid ball of cell that is known as morula this state is known as the morula state where there is nothing determined nothing differentiated only the cells start dividing and they start arranging as stacks one after another as a layer now how they arrange that thing depends on different types of organisms and differs for different types of organism so but once we have this uh, this rigid cell rigid ball known as the morula then comes the arrangement of those cells and those cells start arranging and creating a center hollow chamber that is filled with some fluid that is the step known as blastula and the process of conversion from morula to blastula is known as the blastulation step so what is it blastulation is the first very important measurable change that uh, is one you can say one of the major advances in the process of an embryo development so what happens in blastula is simply these cells start arranging to the side like this and then it creates a hollow sphere remember all the structures that we're looking these are not two dimensional structure these are all three dimensional structures so think of this as a hollow uh, this, this as a rigid ball and this as a hollow ball so if you make a cross section of it you'll see something like this in the center you will see it's fluid fluid filled and the cells they are separated and creates a membrane like structures surrounding okay this step is known as the blastula now the question is how exactly this blastula formed what are the important players to make a structure like blastula now to understand the process of blastula formation we generally use frog or sea urchin as a model organism mainly you, you, you utilize frog as a model organism because the process of blastulation is very well understood in the experimental process in frog so what we can check here is the difference mainly is in terms of how the cells will arrange because once the cells are arranged in the form of blastula then the blastula will be further converted into the process known as gastrulation or formation of gastrula and that is nothing but folding of the sheet of the cell inside that will create three separate layers of tissue and from each of those separate layers of tissue different types of body organs and organ systems will be generated so for now on we only focus on blastula and how it converts from a uh, rigid ball of cell to a hollow sphere you simply know at the very beginning when the zygote start dividing as I told you the division is very very fast 
So to make a very high phase division, they cannot continue through all the stages of cell division. That is G1, AS, G2 and M, right? These are the four phases. So the interphase G1, AS, G2 is taking a lot of time. We know M phase, which is the actual mitotic phase and division phase is very short. So G1 and G2 phases are removed during the first few rounds of cell division. In the first few rounds of cell division, once the G1 and G2 is removed, in that case we only have S phase and M phase. S phase is really required because S phase is where the DNA replication takes place, duplication of the DNA, then only we can separate it into the M phase. That's why only S phase and M phase creates a very rapid, very, very fast cell division and sooner from this zygote we make 8 cells at least. And when we have 8 cells at least, we call them morula. That's the idea. You need to have at least 8 cells, minimum of 8 cells to call it as a morula state. So once you have 8 cells, now how those 8 cells will be arranged? The 8 cells is never present like a tumor kind of cells, undifferentiated state, nothing like that. They start to show a little bit of organization from the first point of the cell division. And those cells start forming layers. So let's say this is a four cell creating one layer. And on the top of this four cell, there will be other four cells. So we have a two layers. In the, in, in the side views, we can see something like this. Uh, this is uh, the layer of one cells and the layer of other cells on the surrounding like this. So two layers, one on top of the other. That's how they form morula. But after formation of morula, they need to prepare the cells so that they can make three layers and that is the gastrulation phase. And only to achieve that gastrulation phase, they need to create a cavity inside. Because we know if we look at the ultimate fate of all this process, and that is an adult organism. And that adult organism have multiple types of body tissues, multiple types of organ system. It has digestive system, respiratory system, circulatory system, nervous system, and so many different types of body systems, so many different types of cells that are required. And we know all those cells will be produced from this one zygote, from the cells in the blastula. So because this type of cells, they are pluripotent in nature. One type of cell can divide and make all the varieties of cell by itself. That is a pluripotent nature of a cell, okay, or multipotent nature of a cell. So at this point of the time, these cells start arranging and they start separating to the surrounding to make this structure of blastula. Okay. Now normally in case of frog, these, these cells start separating to the surrounding and when it starts separating to the surrounding, it starts making a center hollow chamber. That's how the blastula is formed. Now the question is whether for all the organisms the blastula formation occurs like this way. The answer is no. And even for all the type of organism, morula is not even the same. I can tell you example of two such situations where the formation of blastula and morula is also a little bit different. For example, take us humans as an example. And another case, humans are belonging to the mammals and apart from mammals, let's look at birds. Now the difference between birds and mammals are in case of mammal, the egg, or we can say in the part of the zygote at that point, zygote contains like the egg contains yolk. The right? yolk is really important to provide nutrients and supply nutrients to the developing embryo. So the amount of yolk and how the yolk is distributed into the egg dictates how that cell will divide and how the morula will look like. For example, in case of mammals, the yolk is fairly distributed to the rest of the uh, cell. So like the yolk is almost present in the, in the, in the, in the, in the surroundings and total uh, of the surroundings. That's how it looks like. So in this case, uh, it's known as an isolacetal type of eggs or isolacetal pattern of cleavage because cleavage means the division of the cell from the zygote to make morula right so isolacetal means the egg distribution is almost same across the all the poles of the egg so at this point the cell division can start from any of this point and it can divide completely so it can divide a egg completely to the start to the end and after each rounds of complete cell division it can make bunch of cells known as morula state but apart from that in case of birds if you look at birds birds have a egg known as telolacetal 
because in case of bird i hope you all know about uh, the chicken egg and that egg i think you all know the structures as well and the structure states uh, something like this it states the egg the, the you know that the yolk is present in one pole of the egg more that's why called as telolecithal so for this type of cells uh, the cell division starts from the opposite side of the yolk and that's true for all the type of uh, cleavage cleavage always starts from the opposite side where the egg yolk is present and the opposite side of egg yolk is known as the animal pole and the side where egg yolk is present known as the vegetal pole so always it starts from the animal pole but due to the high concentration of the yolk that is present to the other vegetal pole the division is not complete so every single time cell division begins it ended up to somewhere middle and as a result what happens sooner the cells start dividing and dividing but this pattern remains as it is so sooner it ends up with a cell stack of cell dividing on the top of the embryo and this is the yolk so this is how it looks like and if you look at from the top it looks like small uh, division of the cells like a uh, discs present on the top of uh, the main uh, egg so this is known as discoidal uh, pattern of the cleavage and this disc like structures uh, is a unique feature for the birds as well as for the fish but for us it's nothing like that for frog also the distribution is almost kind of equal and the division is perfectly fine so this division which forms the state called morula is very important to finally dictate how the blastula will look like because for and because for mammals for example or frog uh, which is amphibians if you look at here the distribution is kind of even so the cell division is kind of even and then formation of blastula will be quite easy now what makes the conversion of morula to blastula the only thing that is different between morula and blastula is the number of cells because the cell will continue to divide but not only the cell continues to divide but also the cells start arranging and attaching with themselves so there should be something some kind of cell attachment or anchoring proteins that are holding the structures of nearby cells together right and what is those thing those things are known as if i if i look at here in the middle all the cells they hold very tightly with each other known as cell adhesion molecules or cam cell adhesion molecules are present to the extracellular matrix of all the cells and that plays a very very important role in making a blastula structure now experiments been done like with two separate uh, uh, experiments in one case we blocked uh, the attachment of cam in some other experiment as a control no blocking we see the the, the one plate where we blocked uh, the the attachment of cam uh, all them have failed to achieve blastula structure although cells start dividing what they produce almost kind of a very very much undifferentiated structure something like this like they start forming a structure like blastula but somehow the structure is undifferentiated and the blast and, and the pore in the middle is not created as well so it's like extended version of morula but blastula has failed to form so cams play a vital role in making the actual blastula structure and in the structure of blastula these are individual cells and individual cells are known as blastomere the center fluid filled cavity is known as blastocele and the layer of cells that are forming and covering blastocele is known as blastoderm these are the three regions of a blastula or blastula state okay now once they form this blastula what they can do is simply the cells will start folding inside folding and going inside of the blastocele and they will start to compress blastocele and start creating another pore which will be formed from outside known as archenteron and that pore will form the primitive gut or coelom of an organism and we all know what is gut gut is the place where all the internal organs are placed because we are not open ended uh, animals we have a properly formed coelom so this 
structure of blastula and folding of blastula ultimately will dictate the formation of that blastulation. But what about for birds? In case of birds, the idea of gastrulation will be different compared to uh, the frog or the mammals. Because in case of birds, I told you, there is a discoidal pattern. The pattern is like formation of disc-like cells on the top of the egg. So at this point, what we know is they cannot initiate the process of uh, division. They cannot initiate uh, the process of this type of folding because they don't have proper cell divided. So what will happen here? In case of birds, the layer of tissues, the layer of cells that are formed during blastula will split and make multiple layers by that way. It's not kind of a folding, but it's a splitting of cells. So that mechanism is different in case of birds, which we will see in a moment. But this in a term is a formation of blastoderm and formation of blastula. Now the question is, for the formation of blastula and how it looks like, it depends on two things. One thing we have already discussed, that is the distribution and amount of yolk that is present in the egg. And the second thing is how the cell cleavage take place. That is how the cell is dividing, in which axis the cell is dividing. Because you know the cell can divide in both uh, the straight, uh, utilizing a straight axis or with a rotational axis. So if it's dividing with a basic straight axis, let's say, uh, if this is the cell, let me draw it here, I don't know you can see it or not, but this is the cell and uh, let's say uh, these are the two place of microtubule organizing center, these are the chromosomes, so this cell will divide utilizing the straight axis, but this may also divide utilizing a slightly different angle. Based on that, uh, the arrangement of cells in moduli is also altered, okay. So we have these two types of cleavage pattern as well. We have this radial axis that is the straight axis and rotational axis that is with an angle. So for mammals we have this rotational axis and for uh, the other sea urchin we have a radial axis. Okay. So these are the types of way that blastula is formed. In this next video we will talk about how this blastula start folding in case of mammals or, or amphibians and we also see how the layer of tissue is divided into multiple layers in case of chick or chicken embryo. So stay tuned and watch the video. Thank you.